For today's video, we'll speak about the midfield. So we'll go through uh, my three locks and my three avoids for when Supercoach opens, um, I'm not sure, late December. So keen for that. So we went through the defenders video about a week ago, I think. And yeah, we'll do the midfielders now. So the midfield, always fun to pick from. Lots of great options. Definitely best not to screw around too much in the midfield or at all, but... Uh, we'll see which plays come up in the preseason, but yeah, the premiums that we pick from, uh, they seem pretty bulletproof. So my first lock is Jack Steele. So for me, Jack Steele, I would have him at M1 for Supercoach 2022. Um, yeah, two seasons of above 120 now. Uh, had a slow start. It seems there was some correlation with... Um, Rowan Marshall, with Rowan being out early, uh, it may have affected still scoring. So assuming Rowan's uh, name round one, uh, all going well, should happen. Uh, yeah, definitely can't argue against, I think, still will be M1. And most importantly, he'll be the go-to captain option. But watching still play, you just see how hard he works. And the defensive side of his game is so good that you know he gets points from it with tackling. So the, and the tackle stick as well. So, yeah, uh, one of my favorite, if not my favorite player, top, top three at least, um, to watch to watch play. So, Jack Steele, M1, lock him away. The next player who I like and will be in my starting team is Tom Mitchell. Um, so, a lot of great mids to pick from, but I've gone for Tom Mitchell, who I think will be underpriced. Um, so, hasn't had a proper preseason for two years, basically, so... Almost didn't get named in round one um, in 2021. Um, and then he missed a full year. I think it was 2019. So, um, yeah, didn't had, had, he's had a shoulder issue and um, had that nasty leg break. So it usually takes two years to get over fully uh, from a leg break. And he started to come good. He was back to his, um, you know, finished on 25 Brownlow votes, uh, back to his old self in the second half of the year. So... Um, I don't think Sam Mitchell will use him any differently. I'm not sure you can. Um, but yeah, Tom Mitchell, um, he's a fantasy pig. And yeah, I think he should be able to continue his 130. I think it was roughly 125 to 130 average post buy in 2021. So uh, for that reason, I think he's underpriced. I don't think there's anyone that's going to take his points away. He doesn't really get tagged either. So um, maybe once or twice, but probably not. For me, I like Tom Mitchell. I think his durability is good despite the broken leg and the, he had a slight shoulder issue for a bit, um, which he played through and still scored well in 2020. So um, I like Tom Mitchell. I think he should be back to his best, still 28, I think. So um, usually 29, 30, this starts to be some sort of tail off, but Tom Mitchell did miss a fair bit of 40 with that broken leg. So maybe he's a few more miles in the, in the legs left for him. So... Tom Mitchell, I will pick him. The third player, and I can't think of a mid um, to lock away. Uh, McRae's probably close, but I think he's so expensive. You can probably live without him. You know, he's got, he'll be priced at 690k, and he never got to that price once in 2020. In 2021, rather. So, um, still a great pick, but um, I wouldn't say a lock. But my lock will be... I can't think of a premium because I think you can forego a lot of them, but again, they're great picks. But Greg Clark, a rookie from West Coast, if named. So Jared Redden has some sort of injury concern. Doesn't sound like he'll be ready early in the season for 2022. So there might be a spot there. Plus, you know, you never know with Shuey with his injuries. Kelly's had a few injuries as well. Um, oh, yeah, Shuey's done so many hamstrings now. But nonetheless, Greg Clark, mature age. I think he's 20, 24, 26, something like that. Uh, average 120 plus in the waffle. I think he won the Norm Smith equivalent, something like that. So he might be our our best rookie potentially. Definitely has the potential to be a great rookie for us at M8 on field. So obviously he needs to get through preseason well and named round one. But for us, um, he's definitely one I'd have uh, front of mind uh, for now. But um, obviously see how he goes over between now and March. But uh, writing's on the roll wall here that he should be a great pick for us and yeah, a great rookie for us. So uh, yeah, slap him at M8 for now and then see how he goes. Now my three avoids. So it's pretty hard. I'm trying to think of players that are that will have reasonable ownership, um, 
but yeah, my first, you know, obviously I'm going to pick someone that you know, has 0%, but my first avoid will be Zach Merritt. So Zach Merritt, later in the season upgrade, fine, no issues, but as a starting pick, I don't see it working. As something that I should have picked up on last year because I think he was a really popular st- starting pick in 20. 20- 2021 for a number of various reasons maybe new rules helping the inside and outside mids um, he's getting more inside mid time his contested rate is not good enough so only nine contested possessions per game um, and he probably averages what 30 odd disposal so you know barely 30 percent um, contested rate so that that's not high enough for super coach and it's it's almost impossible when you're getting nine contested possessions game to go 120 plus so um, we have Options with a higher ceiling, and you know that have proven have done and have done it for 22 games before. So for me, Zach Merritt, there's no real reason to start Merritt. Every year he's a great upgrade target, but started him in 2021 was a mistake. wasn't a bad pick at all, but um, there were better options. So um, I will avoid Zach Merritt as a starting pick. My second avoid for now. Is probably going to be someone with one of the highest ownerships. It's I'm going to. Okay, I'll say it. Lockie Neal. Um, I almost had to bite my tongue there, but yeah, this is one where very scary to not have Lockie Neal. I think for 2022, but I just think you know soft tissue injuries now. So many injuries. Is he stressed at home because his wife wants to get back to Perth? I imagine she does want to go back to Perth. Um, obviously be very difficult with a newborn um, with family interstate so um, did that affect his 2021 it was a very strange very strange year that no one picked from Lockie Neal being so ultra durable had some injury issues in pre-seasons but always got up for just about every game 21 22 games every year and the massive year the Brownlee year in 2020 but he's I think he'll be 29 now um, which is usually when plays decline. I think it's when Danger went from 130 to 135 to 120. I think Pendlebury dropped a fair bit. Um, he stopped going 120s. So, um, yeah, it's just roughly the age where the players begin to tail off. And I think Tom Mitchell's kind of close, but I think Tom Mitchell will be, be okay because he's played a lot less games. So... Yeah, it's an interesting one, Lockie Neal, and definitely one I'll monitor very heavily in the preseason, but I really don't want to pick him. Because another issue is, is Lockie Neal still going to be a top 8, top 10 midfielder? That comes with no guarantees, because he was nowhere near it, despite all the injuries that he had to play through um, in 2021. Um, There's so many unbelievably good options this year, and I don't really want to be stuck. Look, if he averages 110, um, which he can definitely do, I think that and you know, 535, 40K, that's still a great result, I think. But it's that with now what looks like the durability issue. So it's hard to know what to expect from Neil. Like, what is he? Um, was it just a one-off year? Will injuries continue? We'll see how he goes if he gets a full preseason in because he's had a lot of interrupted preseasons and the, the two or three seasons that he went 120 plus, they were just about the only seasons where he had full preseasons. So maybe there's a, the correlation is there depending on how he goes in the preseason. So, um, see how he goes. So, that's my... I'll be doing my best to avoid Lockie Neal, but that could definitely change. But yeah, when Supercoach opens, he won't be there. And my third avoid is kind of hard to pick of, pick from, and probably going to say Patrick Cripps. So, it's easy to be critical of him. He's definitely underperformed the past few years. But now soft tissue injuries have kicked in. I think late last year had a quad issue or something like that. Be very cheap. Um, to me, he just looks like a shell of himself. But, you know, he was so great to watch in 2019 and 2018. He was so strong in the midfield. There was one game where he, I think he scored nearly 200, kicked four goals against Brisbane. It was one of the most unbelievable performances you've ever seen. But unfortunately, he doesn't look like that guy anymore. Um Maybe Carlton, is he even in Carlton's best midfield anymore? I know that sounds very silly to say, but if you watch him play, he just seems very slow decision-making. Um, but yeah, it will take some sort of turnaround. It's a combination of you know form declining and injuries slowly mounting with Cripps. So um, 
yeah, I don't see him magically getting back to 120, 119 averages anymore. So, yeah, um, potentially underpriced, but I, I just don't see it. So hopefully it's a good preseason and can recapture some of that form, but it's just a massive ask to get anywhere near what he used to be, um, given how far he's fallen. So in summary, my three locks will be Jack Steele, Tom Mitchell, and Greg Clark from the, the Eagles rookie, mature age. And then my three avoids when Supercoach opens, obviously can change when um, March comes around, but um, well, definitely, so the three players are, definitely won't have Zach Merritt in my starting team. Most likely won't have Lockie Neal in my starting team. And who was the other one? Somebody else. Patrick Cripps. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon.